What are you doing, Lizzie? Hey guys, so today I am here with a special guest for Braid Girls. This is Lizzie, and we're super, super excited to have her. She is our last woofer until mm -hmm. we are on a farm again. Did you, did you want to tell them anything about yourself? Sure, yeah. So for an introduction, I'm from New Hampshire. I graduated from college in 2014. Um, and since then, I've been working a job as a research assistant um, through Dartmouth College. So I'm kind of in between life uh, events, I guess you could say. Um, um, and I wanted to see the country and travel a little bit while I still have the time and while I'm still young and able to do that. So, And I think it's little, brilliant. Yeah. yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> the, and and all almost all of our woofers have been in kind of the same situation. Mm -hmm. They're done with college. They've moved on to either their master's or they're moving on to, uh, they, they have a really solid career, but now they're on a big vacation. Mm -hmm. And one of the big reasons that people do the woof, <clears throat> pardon, the woofing program is that you have room and board mm -hmm. for a few hours of work a day, which now that we've been in the RV, that is not insignificant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you think about the cost of a motel if you're staying in a motel. Groceries right. are expensive. Fuel is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have yet to have any woofers that are like vagrant, yeah. you know, hippie types. That's good. <laughs> we've, we've never had We've never had a woofer that, that wasn't exceptionally hardworking. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been really fun for our family because different cultures, different parts of the country, we've learned a lot mm -hmm. from our woofers. And so, but we've never had on our show anybody that's actually been in the program on the other side, not the hosting, but mm -hmm. on the, the actual working side of it. Yeah. So Lizzie's going to go through and explain some of the things that she's learned from the experiences, good, bad, um, maybe things you'd like to change about the program. Mm -hmm. um, so go for it. Okay. Um, well, to start off, I would say the biggest thing... Um, that I've had to kind of wrap my head around is to just always keep an open mind. Um, so even though there is a lot of communication beforehand with, uh, between the host and the potential woofers, you don't always really know what a farm's going to be like until you get there, um, what exactly the jobs you're going to be doing are, or the lifestyle of the people you'll be staying with. So you just kind of have to go into it with an open mind, an open heart, um, and willing to do whatever is thrown at you for the most part. Um, so the first farm I was at was in Minnesota, and it was a really small town, which I'm um, noticing that a lot of towns around here are pretty small. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from a town of about 5,000 people, which um, can seem, that seems almost big out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I passed some signs for towns of like 100 people or fewer, so All right. it's, it's a little different. Um, but the first farm was awesome. The structure was, um, it was a stay-at-home couple, so they both worked on the farm. They had a four-month-old baby, um, so that, that factored into what we were able to do every day and kind of the hours we were able to keep. Um, and that was largely a produce farm. They did have some chickens, um, but there were three square meals a day. We'd work a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon. Um, they were a very religious family, which I'm open to. I didn't grow up um, as a part of any religion, but we did a Bible study every morning after breakfast, um, which was very interesting. That surprises me. Yeah. It really surprises it was, me. Yeah, it was very religion-oriented. Um, most aspects of their lives. Did they say that? I'm, I'm just curious. Did they say that in their profile that they were religious and they practiced with no. their woofers? No. Nope. That surprises me that they wouldn't say that. Yeah. It was a little surprising to me, but they never forced anything on me. They asked me if I wanted to lead prayer every now and then, but I never felt too comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And I think they understood that. Um, How interesting. Yeah. They were lovely people, very generous, very nice. Um, but that was something I had to get used to. Um, and 
kind of, we, we talked about politics a little bit, and that was a little different. Right. Um, but always interesting. Uh, again, you just have to have an open mind mm-hmm. um, and try to understand things from their perspective. Did you ever feel like, for us, it felt like after a little while, the woofers kind of became part of the family. Mm-hmm. You really got very comfortable. Like for us, we would have a prayer before yeah. meals, yeah. but we didn't ever ask them to come and be part of scripture study or anything like right. that. We felt, but we did say in our, in our, um, in our posting as a host, we did mm-hmm. write our area is religious. We would prefer not to have nudity right. because it will offend the community. But mm-hmm. so, so it's just kind of interesting. I think it's yeah. much better to have more in mm-hmm. your post as far as being a host yeah. than it is to have less. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because I didn't really know what questions to ask, yeah. and now I kind of have a better idea um, of, you know, what information is good to know beforehand. Yeah. Well, um, and Lizzie called. Like, I think you're <laughs> yeah. the only woofer that, like, called and really wanted to have a big conversation yes. with me before they came. Yes. And which, at the time, I was like, I wasn't I wasn't sure if my, if like, if my post as a host <laughs> had, like, scared you. But yeah. having heard your stories of some of your hosts, it makes a lot more sense that it would be really smart as a woofer to call and have an actual right. conversation because you can dig a lot deeper yeah. and make people really be responsible for what they've said. Yeah. 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 That just gives you a better understanding of the, the situation you're going to yeah. be in. Um, yeah. So that was um, the phone call I wanted to have was based off of my experience at the second farm I was at. Which was also, it turned out to be a good experience. It started off a little bit rocky. Um, I, I think didn't... it's okay to tell them some of the scary part. I mean, <laughs> yeah. a lot a lot of the girls, a lot of the people we've had have been single women. Right. And knowing your experience, I think, would, would help a lot of girls mm-hmm. to know, hey, this would be something that I should, like, yeah. is there going to be a strange man there when I show up? Right. Yeah, so that was exactly <laughs> what happened. Um, I made sure as a solo woman traveling by myself that I only applied to farms that were run by either a couple or a family or a single woman. Um, I just didn't want to put myself in, in an environment that was just a single guy um, running the show. And it would probably be fine, but you never know. So Especially where it's rural. I mean, right. you're so far away from yeah, everything. So isolated, um, especially at this, at this one farm when I arrived and the host wasn't there. Um, the host was a woman, but I arrived and Hours before I, you know, got to their front door, I was told via text message that there's a guy named Robert waiting for me, um, who was going to show me where I was sleeping and around the the grounds. Um, So I didn't even know who he was, and that was a little bit terrifying, (laughs) to say the least, um, arriving to that situation. Um, It turns out he was another woofer, um, but it, it, that was kind of a a good unfolding of events. It could have gone, could have gone terribly, you know, so that's why you just never know. Um, and then I wasn't aware the other part of that experience was that I wasn't aware that the host was almost never going to be there. Um, so she worked a lot. I knew she worked part-time, but again, this is kind of where a telephone call would have, um, you know, ironed out the details a little Mm -hmm. bit better, made things a little bit more clear. Um, I wasn't too comfortable being alone on her farm all day. From some days it was like 7 a.m. to after midnight um, that I was alone. Uh, So anything bad that anything bad that happened on the farm, I would have been the only one there. Um, So that was that was a much different experience on that farm than with the first farm that was so involved. Right. Um, well, and wasn't yeah. there a problem with like that there had been a miscommunication that it sounded like their farm was fully developed, mm-hmm. but it should right. you showed up and there was like, what am I supposed to yeah. do? Yeah. So that was another thing where a phone call would have been great. Uh, on her profile, it said that, um, you know, in the description of her farm, it said that she had all these animals and that she had permaculture set up and hotbeds and, um, what else? Some other things that, you know, I went into expecting it to be a fully functioning farm. Um, And that, in reality, I realized that that was more of her dream, which is fine. I just wish it were more transparent on the website. 
uh, that I knew the kind of things we would be doing. Um, so there was no produce, there weren't really any um, structures set up. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but we did a lot of like smaller jobs, just kind of maintenance jobs because she didn't have a lot of time to sort of get the ball rolling. So we were always constantly just keeping up with things, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like putting out brush fires is how she puts right. it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, And a woofer like me, who I'm in it to learn a lot. I was hoping to work alongside of her. Um, I didn't really get the experience that I was looking for. So that's where it would have been nice to kind of talk around the phone and see how things were going, yeah. you know, currently on the farm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get to a place and it's, um, a, you know, you're in tents, but it's pouring rain or there's mm -hmm. a barn, but there's no tent. Mm -hmm. And it's, so I think it's one of those things where the more communication you can do, I mean, there's some people yeah. who love to tent it in the rain. Right. Yeah. And if you're one of those people, that's fantastic. But Communication, communication, communication. Mm -hmm. For us, um, having Lizzie here has been amazing. <laughs> I'm not sure it's been so much for her because we're moving oh, yeah. in the middle of it. Because we arranged to have Lizzie come when we were still going to be here on the farm. Mm -hmm. We had a set amount of stuff we were going to do. And now we're moving. And so things are still a little bit up in the air. Mm -hmm. But I think your first priority has to be, is your woofer going to be safe? Mm hmm are they going to be in a, in a, are, you know, you're really responsible that, that mm -hmm. this girl or, or guy, that they're not going to be getting sick, that they're in a safe situation. Yeah. You're in contact with your parents when you show up to a mm -hmm. place. Yes. And your sister already knew what our address was, right? Um, uh, my sister. Yes, she did. And yeah. so they, they knew where you were going to be. You checked mm -hmm. in with them. Mm -hmm. Having something like that, I think, is 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 really really smart. Whether you, whether you're a guy or whether you're a girl. Mm -hmm. um, I know from the hosts part of it. Uh, never underestimate the amount of time it takes to make sure that your your new friend that's going to be here is going to be comfortable. Never underestimate that. It's not, it's not, this is not a work camp. Mm -hmm. This isn't something where you're just sticking somebody in a hole and just right. assuming <laughs> that, that all their needs are going to be met. So, um, for us, that meant either the RV previously was the RV cause we were, we were, it was the middle of summer and we were more concerned about people having privacy. Mm -hmm. Now it's colder and it's like, I don't think she should be outside. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's important, and we like to check beforehand that there's no allergies, no food allergies, because mm -hmm. you are responsible to cook. Yeah. I've been really late on meals lately, so poor Lizzie oh, no, has no. half-starved. No, it's been great. <laughs> but, it, it, you know, it's one of those things. Um, previously, we would put fruit in the RV so that in between meals there was always something to snack on. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't done as well with that. No, I've it. been Moving well so fed. <laughs> <laughs> so she's been a really good sport, but... Um, is there anything else that you think off the top of your hmm. head? And to not be afraid to speak up if you're not comfortable with something, um, in terms of eating or doing a job that might be physically painful or, you know, whatever. It's always okay to keep a line of communication open. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, just keep an open mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, along that line, we were very careful when we have had woofers that we ask them before we plan on certain jobs like butchering. Mm -hmm. If somebody's right. not comfortable with butchering, we don't ask them part to participate. Not only that, but we just don't do it on the farm while they're mm -hmm. there. Um, what are other things? Um, a lot. Most woofers don't have a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so in that case, you have to be really sensitive to make sure that if they have certain food needs or if they... Oh, right need something picked up that you yeah. pick it up for them because um let's see we did uh, we did have bikes that we had the woofers using mm -hmm. um just and and I don't know for us when we left we liked to have a little bit of a going away party like we'd make Aww. a special dinner <laughs> we'd go to the hot yeah. springs that are here local just because you know over that amount of time you you really are it's like their family while, mm -hmm. while they're here and 
and all of our woofers have been amazing in that they've like sent postcards to the girls from other destinations mm-hmm. and we we Aww. feel like we've stayed pretty close so yeah we've never had a bad experience with it um how long do you usually host woofers for it's typically? really it's really been all over the map yeah um okay and we did have one no show where it was kind of back and forth about whether or not um, mm-hmm. the timing was going to work, and then she was supposed to show up, and then she didn't show up. Oh. But one out of many, yeah, you know. So it was. Uh, I think it's more. I think it's easier for the woofer if they stay longer because you do get to mm-hmm. a point where you understand the routine, yeah, and um, you kind of get into a system with each other's who's doing what and right. and where, but. The, I, it feels like the shorter the stay, the 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 less fun it is mm-hmm. along the way. Yeah, because there's so much introduction in the beginning. There is. And learning about where everything is and, mm-hmm. you know, how it operates, how the farm operates yeah. on a general level. So yeah. once you get through all that, then it's it becomes a lot more fun, I yeah. think. I think so. And and you warm up to each other. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't I don't think we've had anybody that really took very long to warm up, but mm-hmm. it does take a couple days just to mm-hmm. just to kind of learn to read each other and body language and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um but anyway, so any of you that don't know, Woofer stands for Worldwide World... Opportunities. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. So it's W W O O F. And then so yes. I would be a woofer. Mm-hmm. Um, and is it dot net? Um, for, so for the USA website, if you want to have a membership for the United States, it would be www.woofusa.org. Mm-hmm. So okay. woofusa.org. Um, but you can woof in pretty much any country. Yeah. And it's and it's it's. I think it costs fifteen. I think it costs something like fifteen dollars oh, okay. for us to register. Yeah. I don't know if it costs you guys anything to register. Yeah, it's forty dollars a year for a membership. So you just pay annually. Um, so I anticipate that after this big trip is done, I'll probably cancel my membership unless mm-hmm. I want to keep woofing. Yeah. Or... And we've even thought about woofing ourselves since we're traveling. Yeah. I think it would yeah. be super fun as a family to go and do it. That's we've... what a lot of the hosts have been saying. Do they really? Yeah. They're like, we should go do it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, mm-hmm. We're at the very least. We're hoping to get a hold of some of the woof hosts and say, "Can we just come film, even if we right. don't come work and you don't want us to work? Mm-hmm. Can we come film? Because it's so fun to see what other people are doing. Yeah, and and just how different yeah. farms can be. So anyway, yeah. we'll talk to you later All if right. I can get my hand into. The <laughs> there we go. Here I am doing the thing. So what are you doing, Lizzie? I am working on the living fence. So we. Um, cut off part of the willow um, branches that were getting pretty tall and we're using them to weave into the living fence to help maintain the integrity of the fence and the structure and make it a little bit more sturdy and um, it's great to look at too. (laughs) And how long has it been raining now? Um, (laughs) It hasn't rained yet this morning but it was a little rainy yesterday. It's been pretty rainy this week. It's been really rainy. Here is unusual it's yeah. so abnormal yep. so she gets a non-idaho idaho experience yep. <laughs> instead of dry and really bright yep. this looks really good you can see how tidy this is this spot she's already done and this is what she has left to do so it's a little bit of a amazon jungle <laughs> but it looks yep. good and it's a huge help right Oh, we have a bunny. <laughs> <laughs>